Welcome back to episode 12 of the Computomics podcast, and today we will conclude our series on our suite of metagenomics tools by talking to the Computomics co-founder and author of Megan and Diamond, Daniel Husson. Megan 6 is our comprehensive toolbox for interactively analyzing microbiome data, and it has all the interactive tools you need in one application. We hope you enjoy the episode. Daniel, welcome to the show, and it's a pleasure to have you. Yeah, it's very nice to be here. Yeah, it's a pleasure to talk, and I'm really happy for our audience to get to hear from you about Megan and sort of how it came about, uh, what's happening today, and the outlook. So why don't we just start with giving us a short overview of how Megan was created and sort of how it came about. Okay, so let's go back to the year 2005-2006 when the first second generation sequencing technology came out, 454. Back in those days, the question was, what can we use next generation sequencing for? And one of the things that looked promising was a metagenomic analysis. So in a very, very first paper to use next generation sequencing, I looked at the looked at mammoth DNA and the microbiome associated with mammoth. Well, uh, and I think that that paper has a huge amount of citations by now, right? Like yeah, some... I think it's yeah, I don't know what the number is, yet, but that's quite a widely cited. Yeah. Yeah. And so so we said, well, we knew it. we were trying to sequence mammoth DNA, but we knew that, you know, any kind of ancient DNA sample is always going to have uh, a lot of microbial DNA in it. And so we were trying to figure out, OK, how, how can we best analyze this? And I, the idea that we came up with, well, let's just blast these sequences against the NR database and then place them on the NCBI taxonomy. So that was a, the basic idea. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, and, we, and then we said, OK, let's, let's develop a tool around this. So, so Megan was developed back you know, 14 years ago and published 2007, the, first ver the very first version, which was for taxonomic analysis of shotgun metagenomic data. And did you find it sort of joyful that metagenomic analysis would shortcut to Megan? Did you feel like you, it was really giving birth to, you know, because it's a humanized name, right, for a tool. So did it really feel like you were launching something into existence? Yeah, was, yeah it was really, yeah, that was a really a cool, a very simple idea, you know, just blast and then place on the NCBI taxonomy using what's called the LCA algorithm. Uh, yeah, very simple. Uh, but at the time, I gave a number of talks and uh, actually people were horrified about the whole metagenomics thing that you would take reads and blast them against the database and then try and place them that that back in those days, that was quite an alien idea. And who do you think was the first like who were the main supporters or who were the first on board, let's say? Oh, well, one of the early adopters of Megan, the very earliest was actually the JGI uh, in Berkeley, who joined Genomes Institute. Where they, so I gave a talk there back around 2006, and then they put it into their pipeline, their sequencing pipeline, as a, a way of checking whether what was in the sample you know, was actually what people thought in the sample. So you know, it, was a, it was used very early on as, for quality control, just checking that what's mm -hmm. been sequenced is what people hoped was being sequenced. <laughs> And so maybe uh, that's a great kind of lead into what have been some other interesting uses since then. You know, what are some of the most interesting papers that have used it? And what are some of the more interesting applications that you've interacted with? And I know that you don't personally interact with every Megan user, of course, but just sort of, you know, when you look back on its history, yeah, so one, so notable? Uh, one cool paper was came out in Nature 2010. This was the the MetaHit Consortium, they were looking at human, this was one of the first major human gut analyses where they looked at 124 European human gut samples, like 600 gigabytes of sequence, uh, I think it was. Yeah, and I was just reading this paper thinking, oh, this is really cool. I was looking at the taxonomic ana analysis and so on. And then I was wondering, okay, how did they do this? And in the very last line of the methods, it says taxonomic analysis was done using Megan. So I thought that was <laughs> Pretty cool, yeah. So that was, and uh, great. and the part of the backstory there was uh, that they shipped the data by on a hard drive down to Barcelona to a supercomputer center to do the blast analysis. So you know, that was for a while that was one of the hardest parts of this kind of metagenomic analysis. How do you compare your reads against a protein reference database? 
Yeah, and so that's with enough computing power. You mean? Yeah, you need a lot of computing power using BLAST, and that's that. You know, so one of the tools that de was de developed in my lab is Diamond, which is taking all the pain out of that of that process. Yeah, this is a perfect perfect analysis or a perfect chance to talk about this. Actually, Diamond was when I first started working for Computomics, I. I uh, was writing a few blogs for them on cool different things and um, sort of the, the competition behind Diamond was one of the first things I wrote about and I thought, wow, this is this is so cool and such a weird agency to fund this kind of thing that came out to sort of be so socially relevant and helpful. So uh, without me telling it, maybe you can kind of give the, oh, yeah, the so cool you're, story. Oh, yeah, so you're referring to the to the, the, the Ditra algorithms yes, challenge. Yeah, that, yeah right, the, yeah, yeah. You've, what is it, Ditra, the Defense Threat Reduction Agency, a, that's right, a Pentagon that's right, agency. Yeah. They put yeah. out a million dollar prize uh, for a very fast and accurate method for analyzing uh, host associated samples, basically right. samples with viruses and bacteria and things in it. Uh, yeah, and so, and so we took part in that competition and we had a, and uh, we came up with a really fast way to align sequences. That was the main one of the main things in our approach and and, and that Megan Light analysis. Yeah. And so. So is that is Diamond essentially what makes Megan Diamond, so Diamond? Yeah. Diamond came out. Of, yeah, Diamond is like a product of that of that competition. Yeah. And is that what makes Megan so so fast on its feet, let's say? Well, that, uh, yeah. So Megan, like other other similar approaches, they they all analyze the output of a, an alignment program like Diamond. And mm -hmm. previously, before Diamond existed, there was only BLAST, and BLAST is so slow, it wasn't developed for high throughput. Uh, yeah, and so Diamond, uh, without, so yeah, I think Diamond's, you know, it's a key, become a key program in many, many, many of the analysis pipelines, just because it has that 20,000 fold speed up over, uh, over BLAST yeah. without losing accuracy. And Sorry. we do implement Diamond in our Morpheus um, analysis pipeline, correct? So it is used in a lot of different other applications yeah, it's, besides. Yeah. It's yeah. very widely used, yep. Oh, that's awesome. So do you have any other outputs that you're incredibly proud of that I may not know about? So anything else that you've authored that... Other um, tools. Um, yeah, I'm just curious for, for personal. Yeah, well, we're, yeah, so there's a tool that, that I wrote that, that's been around for a long time. It's called Spitstree, which is a... A phylogenetic analysis tool that we published about 2006 as well. That's been very highly cited. That's oh, fantastic. My, that's my high, most highly cited paper after the human genome, which I'm just one of 270 authors on. So that's <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah. So that's that does phylogen networks, and we just been uh, we just extended that so that you could also use it in the context of metagenomic analysis. You give it a, you give it a contig, and it will compare that contig against all of. Uh, all the known genomes, and it will tell you very quickly what what it thinks it is. So it's this is yeah. So it's we're we're merging in a way phylogenetic analysis with metagenomic Genomic analysis, analysis. in this tool. Yeah, that's very cool. So maybe that's some of that more interesting um, information. Maybe you can tell us some of the latest updates to Megan and what you yeah. know, what you've been sort of so, tweaking and yeah. So uh, is so short metagenomics based on short reads has. Has never fulfilled the promise that you would hope that it would fill, you know, fulfill. I mean, you, short read, you know, sequencing, Illumina sequencing, is very powerful, produces a lot of sequence. But for metagenomic analysis, it can only do profiling for you. It can tell you, okay, I, these organisms are present, these genes are present. But what's really missing with short read analysis is uh, being able to say which reads occur together on. A single genome. You can't. You don't really get genomes out of short read sequencing. I mean, it, you can try and assemble short reads, and you, you, with a lot of work, you can get some reasonable side context, but it basically doesn't work as well as you would hope. But long mm -hmm. read sequencing, you know, nanopore sequencing, packed bio sequencing, is uh, you know, is, is way more fun because uh, if you do metagenomics using these kind of technologies, uh, you get whole chromosomes. You get complete. You get complete genomes out of a microbiome. And has then, really changed. Has really yes, changed that, the that's game, game, right? that's game changing. Yeah. So it's uh, actually uh, it's a paradox. Uh, you would think, okay, with short reads, I really need to assemble to get something long and useful. Whereas long reads are so long, I don't really need to assemble them. But actually, short read assembling short reads in metagenome context makes no sense because the contig lengths that you get, you know, are measured in hundreds of bases. So it's not really 
You're not really assembling in the true sense, right? You're just sort of... Yeah, you're just getting slightly longer pieces. But with long reads, suddenly you go from... You go to complete chromosomes. So even though the reads themselves are 10,000 K or longer, you might think, okay, that's enough. But actually, no, just take those long reads and assemble them into complete chromosomes. And now you've really got something where you can start working, working out the details of what's going on in, in a microbiome. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so. so all to say that Megan is now equipped for long read sequencing. Yeah, so, so we, we have to, yeah, so Megan, we, we've added a lot of uh, new algorithms and support for long reads in, in Megan. Uh, and, but also Diamond was modified, so they were, Diamond was originally def designed as, uh, for short read alignment, but now, but, uh, but with uh, recent updates that we published two years ago, I think uh, it's, uh, you can also use it for long reads, yeah, so. Awesome, and did you, I mean, do you partner up with, you know, any sequencing providers to do this, or is it something that you just sort of do independent of them, or do you call them and say, hey, listen, we have this tool, and we want to make it... Uh, you know, yeah, no, I, how, yeah. do, how does that all work? Yeah, no, we don't really uh, talk directly with. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, so a lot of this work is actually done. I've had a for the last six for uh, last eight years. I've had a, a honorary professorship or visiting appointment at the National University of Singapore. So I've been going to Singapore every year, and they have been interested in working on uh, wastewater treatment. So metagenomics in the con context context of wastewater treatment and. Yeah, and so that's and so a lot of development took place there, where we were looking at the bioreactor communities. So where you see the bioreactor with wastewater, wastewater sludge, and then you, you study. And then what you're interested in the, in the pathways that actually uh, biodegrade or yeah, purify the water? Is yeah, that how you, it works? Yeah, yeah, that yeah, that's the, exactly. So they really want the microbial communities that are actually doing the work that they want done, essentially. Yeah, people want to. Yeah, people want to understand in detail what's going on in wastewater treatment. I mean, people. There's a lot of engineering knowledge. People know that. Okay, this is. We need these. You know, we need certain types of organisms to be present, or certain organisms are present. But what goes on in detail is uh, something that people are what studying. What are the actual pathways being done so that we can yeah. we can even implement our own? I don't know. Engineered, let's say, yeah. enhanced. Okay, yeah. and which path are we really looking to enhance, right? Which characteristic yeah. or which trait or which gene or which output? Yeah, which organisms, are, you know, is it, is it just, is it just a, a couple of the organisms working on their own or are, they, are, there, is, is, are there major interactions, uh, dependencies between different types of organisms, different mm -hmm. species of bacteria, yeah, that kind of thing. So, uh, but I can't pretend that I understand the details of the biology or the biochemistry. <laughs> so my, my role is always, uh, you know, developing tools so that, to help people uh, yeah. answer such questions. I wonder if that's really a winning feature of metagenomic analysis in general is that it doesn't have the sort of scary output of human genetics, right? So it doesn't have the designer baby feature to it, um, let's say, but it has, it does have a lot of social implications if people start looking at them, right? So in ways that we do recycling or clean energy or clean fuel or clean water, it does have a lot of promise there. And so perhaps it's, easier for people to get behind or for the general community to sort of latch on to. Do you, do you have that yeah, feeling? Yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's definitely true. And the other thing is, is it's such an interesting area because it's, we really don't know in detail what's going on. We don't know, you know, we don't really know, you know, how diverse is the, the environment, you know, microbes in the environment. Is there an endless, bottomless sea of diversity or are we yeah. going to bottom out at some point and see okay basically we we're seeing the same organisms over and over that kind of thing there's so many you know and unanswered how, yeah yeah are they really do microbes in the environment really you know how strongly do they interact with each other and is are they all the, doing the same thing are they yeah. all working against each other with each other right like what are they knowing who's there that's you know yeah. that's one interesting thing but what are they doing to each other with each other yeah. so and is it all random chance, or is there are there things that you keep you can rediscover in, in a similar environment uh, in a different location? Yeah, that's also not clear. Yeah, I agree. Amazing. So, what do you think in general? Like, where do you think the field in general will go in the next? I don't know. Let's say decade. What do you think will be the next kind of big questions, or I don't know, just sort of interesting things that are on your mind when you when you do this work or when you read, you know, publications? Yeah, I think. Well, well for. I mean, for me, the most exciting thing at the moment, is, as I already indicated, are the, are the long reads and the ability to actually capture whole genomes. Because I would imagine with that kind of information, people can really start to 
figure out in detail what's going on and saying, okay, yeah, there's this pathway in this organism uh, and there's uh, another pathway in this other organism and uh, this one feeds off of that one and, and, and so on. So we're looking at that kind of thing here in, in tubing in as well with, with, uh, with Lars Anginen, who's in biotechnology, where we're looking at uh, microbiomes or communities that produce uh, long uh, carbon chains. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, this is uh, all in the context of... Uh, using waste from product, you know, pr uh, uh, producing, you know, waste, from, what am I trying to say? You're like, you know, waste from beer brewing, that kind of, that, that kind of okay, organic okay, waste okay, okay, and okay. turning it, turning it into useful molecules I, I either see, for, uh, see, see, as, see. as food sources or as uh, biofuels. As biofuels, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Okay. Yeah. So wow, which, very cool. So, so these guys are engineers, so they have, they, they know, you know, what kind of communities uh, they want from the outside, but they don't know why these bugs work and those bugs don't work. Yeah. Uh, so that's what we're trying to understand. Isn't it such an interesting aspect of human nature that we can decide what we want without understanding why? <laughs> you know, like we're like, no, these guys. And then you ask yourself, yeah, but really these guys? Or, you know, but like humanity, we. I guess an aspect of humanity, we just really want to feel like we know the answer. And it's amazing that every time there's a new iteration or way to view science, we realize that actually, you know, we are ready to go deeper, right? So because there's a tool that can do it, we're ready to ask the deeper questions, right? So it's almost like the availability of the tool drives the uh, sort of the questions that people are ready to ask. Whereas before they would have said, no, no, it's fine. It's fine for us to know just the populations, right? Yeah. Um, and now they're saying, okay, no, it's, let's, let's find out the functions. Let's find yeah, out why these populations why. and yeah. Yeah. Good. You'd hope also if you understand why then you might be, be able to improve. Yeah. I don't know. Throughput or. Sure. Uh, sure. 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 Thing. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. That's, that's very interesting. So I, I hope that the, you know, metagenomics keeps blossoming and going. And I know that it's an exciting aspect of our products at Computomics and, um, we always really value having you on board and. Thank you for the interview. Yeah, thank you very much. It's been uh, been a lot of fun talking about this stuff, metagenomics and tools. <laughs> All right, great. Thanks, Daniel. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for listening to episode 12 of the Computomics podcast. We hope you learned something and enjoyed this interview with Daniel. It was really a pleasure for me. And if you would like to get in touch with us regarding Megan or to find out more about Diamond, feel free to reach out to Daniel or to Computomics info at computomics.com. You can also follow us on social media. You can listen to these podcasts also on YouTube and feel free to reach out for any questions. As always, don't forget to rate or review this podcast and tune back in for the next episode.